Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Callum Summerton, CEO of Chill Brands. Welcome back, Callum. Hi, guys. It's good to see you again. Good. So obviously, uh, just today we saw the exciting news that Mad Tasty, a hemp-infused beverage brand founded by Ryan Tedder of One Republic fame, is now available for purchase on Chill.com, a new e-commerce marketplace. Chill Brands and Mad Tasty will obviously work together to drive sales via Chill.com and promote other unique consumer packaged goods. Sounds very exciting, Callum. Do you want to just add anything to this? Yeah, it, it really very much is exciting. Mad Tasty is a great brand. They've got a lot of high profile backers and supporters, and they've really shown as well that there is a growing market for these functional beverages. So, so yeah, we're very glad to have them on the marketplace. Pleased to welcome them. They've achieved great coverage so far and uh, continue to do so. They've got sizable retail listings, but they're now looking to chill.com for e-commerce growth. And that's exactly what we're offering to them and to the other brands that we're now starting to work with. Yeah, it was interesting on the RNS. Uh that you stated that there are five other brands to come on on top of this one, I think. Are you going to give us any clues? Uh, I, I won't give you any clues at the moment, but I suppose what I can say is that they've all seen the vision. They know what we can offer, but they also have seen kind of behind the curtain to the bigger picture of what we propose to offer in the future, which is um, what makes this project so exciting. Um, the Chill Marketplace is intended to offer value for brands and consumers. For consumers, it isn't easy to choose a product to buy. It's a huge amount of choice on the market, particularly if you go to the likes of Amazon or other marketplaces. But that doesn't mean that there's a great degree of uh, novelty or quality. On Amazon, it's really hard to know which products are real, which are dupes, um, which are, of again, a high quality, whether they've got real reviews or whether the algorithm's playing games. And, and that's it. On chill.com, we don't plan on having thousands of products in every category. Take beverages. Mad Tasty is our sparkling hemp-infused beverage, and that's it, because we believe and know that it's the best. For all of the categories, we intend to offer a selection that customers can believe in and trust. And trust and quality are the factors that unlock loyalty and repeat purchases in categories like hemp, nootropics and others. So I suppose there might be a few clues in what I just said uh, as to who will be coming on in time to come. But um, yeah, excited to unveil them as we go along. So what sort of benefit in percentage terms do you intend to achieve from the revenue from the sales in these companies in in terms of what chill will earn well, from that yeah what well, what will chill earn i mean obviously you can't give us absolute specifics but you've got five or six contracts there so you can give us an idea of roughly uh, how much uh, chill will earn from from selling products yeah absolutely so so we look at a baseline of around 30% um some brands less some brands more and it really depends on a number of factors and what we can offer to them. One of the um, most important parts of the whole uh, project for us really is being transparent to our brands. If you try to sell on Amazon or eBay or Etsy or any of these established kind of large marketplace sites right now, what you'll find is that just huge amounts of your margin are eaten up, not just by that flat fee, but also by the kind of ancillary services that they offer. With Chill, what we're keen to do is for the brands to say, look, this is what you're signing on at. We're going to help you to improve your net sales on chill.com. We're going to drive volume to you. Uh, and we're not going to continue to up that fee through sort of uh, hidden transactions, whether that's marketing, whether that's whatever it you know, happens to be. We're going to offer a transparent system. Again, going back to the algorithm, none of that is there to sort of play games with brands. We're going to offer a service that is very consistent and priced in a way that allows them to know that they can grow and be confident in us. Very good. So that... That obviously, in terms of a volume of revenue coming through that site, is going to be very, very uh, productive for uh, for chill brands, obviously. Yeah, I think I said in the past, the formula really is a simple one. The more products that are on chill.com and the more traffic that we can then drive towards those products, the greater their uh, chance there is of somebody making a purchase there. Same is true of the chill products that are on there too. The more traffic we can get on there, the greater the chances of somebody purchasing one of those products. But as we start to you know, diversify and increase that product spread, there's you know a, a strong chance that when people land there, they will find something that they want and that is there at the right price point, the, the right level of interest or in the right category for them. So 
I think that's right. You know, this is intended to be a very scalable uh, e-commerce site. Our intention with the brands that are coming on now is to make sure we're not getting kind of put into a particular box uh, as a CBD marketplace or as a, you know, hemp marketplace, but as something that's much wider than that. These are, after all, just ingredients. And our intention is to, to provide ultimately the best uh, there is in terms of choice for functional products, natural ingredients, and you know, getting customers involved in that in a way that they feel they can make a purchase from one or multiple of the brands that are there, obviously then uh, leading back to our bottom line. Yeah. I was just reading, actually, Callum, about the Mad Tasty. So I was just looking into the uh, the product, etc. So it's, it's effectively a sparkling water with 20 milligrams of pure broad spectrum hemp extract sourced from Oregon, I believe. And I just really wondered what I know that it's available from, I believe, in certain uh, states. I think it's, it's Austin, from what I can gather, 120 retailers. So, so tell us how, how the, the, the people who want to purchase a product, will, will they buy it in sort of four packs or eight packs and that happens? How would it be uh, sold? Yeah, the the Mad Tasty uh, product range comes in a sort of number of different formats. So you can buy a pack of the sparkling water drinks as a six pack. You can buy a pack of 12, which has got uh, one of each of the four flavors they've got on there. Unicorn tears and other kind of weird and wacky, but quite tasty (laughs) flavors. And uh, the other option is, of course, to buy one of their wellness shots. So these are very similar to the kind of uh, ginger and turmeric shots that you'll see kind of uh, lining supermarket shelves and in prep at the moment and and it's really kind of like a, a wellness booster as they say to get you up in the morning or to keep you going in the afternoon you can buy those as a pack of 12 again you can buy them as a trial pack so you can mix and match and over time we hope of course to be adding a number of kind of cross promotional product lines as well so that you can buy uh, a mix and match case of mad tasty products or you can kind of mix and match with chill products as well within the same order so um so that's ultimately it yeah they've got some good choice on there uh, you know I've, I've tried all of the products i've got to say i think that the uh the sparkling water in grapefruit is a winner for me but you know i'll leave people to try for themselves yeah you've tasted them all what on earth does unicorn tears taste like i can't tell you that kevin it's uh it's, a... <laughs> it's good it's, um... if you told me that you'd have to cry like a unicorn so yeah, that would them? Yeah, that's, that's how they make. No, um, no, it, it's all good. It's all uh, tasty stuff. And that's the key, I suppose, with any CBD product, as I've said a few times, you know, hemp extracts themselves are quite bitter and earthy. And so you've got to really get your formulation right um, to, to make sure that your drink tastes good. The Mad Tasty drinks do taste good as a result of the kind of partnerships they've got with uh, the technology company that, that formulates for them. Um, if you look at their own website or on ours, you'll, you'll find information about that. But yeah, they all taste good and I think everybody should try them. It's also ethical, isn't it? I think they also donate to Drop for Drop, um, a non-profit organisation. So basically, if providing for every 12 ounces of Mad Tasty sold, the brand donates 12 ounces of clean drinking water to people in places that are in need. Yeah, absolutely right. I, I think that really speaks to the Mad Tasty project as a kind of um, wider initiative as well. You know, clearly Ryan Tedder and his group at Interscope Records have done a fantastic job of creating a drinks brand, but it's all about kind of creativity and effectively, you know, paying back at the same time. So I, I think it is a great brand. Obviously, we intend over time to get more and more involved with those kind of initiatives ourselves as well. And, um, you know, as we add brands on, there will be more opportunity for Chill to pursue creative marketing, but also kind of uh, creative ways to involve ourselves in the community, improve kind of interest in our brand, but also to give a little back to. Yeah. How, how's it looking then in terms of these things being available on the UK website? When could we expect those things? Yeah. So uh, in terms of Mad Tasty, there's a little bit of a, a lag on that in the sense that they're drinks and so they're quite heavy and we've got to work out the shipping elements of that with the UK and our um, logistics set up here. However, if you look to the other brands that I mentioned in that RNS, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the number that we get on in the UK in relatively short order. We're working with them now getting in place all of the legal documents, the uh, insurance certificates, and also all of their creative assets so that we can onboard uh, a number of other brands in the US, sure, but also in the UK. And what I should say is that some of those brands, as they join, will be simultaneously available in the US and the UK um, from the word go. So uh, not quite the case with Mad Tasty as yet, but some of our partners are ready to go in that sense and will be in both territories from, from the very minute they join. Okay. The other thing that I read from your uh, RNS was um, the imminent arrival of new chill products. What could that possibly be, Colin? 
Yeah, I think those are the, uh, you know, everybody knows roughly what those are. That is the long awaited vape product. We're very excited to get those off the ground. Um, you know, we've started working with our retail partners and some new retail partners as well to start pre-selling those before they actually hit the market. We're getting a lot of appetite for at least samples of those products, if not orders already. Part of that is is in uh, no small, you know, I think we can attribute it to the issues that we've had with Elf Bar uh, in the news over the last sort of few weeks. Certainly there is an increased spotlight on high nicotine levels in vapes. And I can go into the kind of science of why you absolutely should avoid that. And I think everybody knows, even without the tobacco, um, that it's an addictive product. It's a, a product that it comes with its own set of problems. But yeah, long story short, we have a lot of interest in them. We're very close here to launching them to retail partners and starting a pre-sales campaign there. And we will also shortly be in a position to start adding them to uh, online sales in the US, you know, a fairly short runway after that, adding them to our UK stores. Okay, very good. So how do you see things panning out then? I mean, uh, one of the things we discussed in previous interview was getting ourselves into a position where you were cash flow uh, positive. So are all of these things going to enhance that possibility uh, to happen much quicker? Yeah, absolutely. So um, certainly with the marketplace, you know, that is a project that doesn't particularly uh, incur a lot of capital investment on our part. And therefore, we can start to add an improved figure onto that bottom line without uh, spending a huge amount. The vapes also are, you know, a product with great margins, something that is in very high demand without the perhaps restrictions that we find in the CBD world or the the stigma that we find in the CBD world. And so the hope is, and my belief, is that we can push those products through with enough uh, volume and at the right price for us to get to a position where we have very healthy cash flow indeed. So I, I do think that they will you know, be of, of great relevance to getting our financial position into an even more stable state. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll refer back to these comments and uh, and update you when I can, once we've made those sales and can announce them. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on at Chill at the moment, which obviously is all intended to enhance uh, shareholder value, but also to obviously just enhance in a basic way our cash flow and uh, the route to profitability. Yeah, until recently, you've been priced to... Uh price to fail basically i think all of these different uh, initiatives that are going to be happening for me especially the uh, the vape in the short term but in the long term i think this chill marketplace could could literally make you tens of millions if you get the right products on them yeah it's certainly the hope i mean the the way that i look at it is this for the brands that we're working with our offering is very simple chill.com is growing do you want to grow with it and the brands that have signed have voted very strongly in favor of that including Mad Tasty. Um, the next step for us is obviously to continue growing there. And, and I do think that we have a very good chance of you know making it into the company that we all hoped and believed it could be and can be. Certainly, I think that the, the most important element of all of this is that Chill over time will no longer just be a CBD company. You know, I've been very clear as of colleagues of mine that CBD is just an ingredient. And so for us to build the entire business around it, I think would be foolish at this stage. Um, you know, it, it's a shame to see such, I, I would say, you know, as far as trauma in the CBD company market over the last few weeks. And uh, part of that can be put down to the fact that you, you can no longer center your entire strategy around CBD. There is still money to be made with that compound, but it's got to be wider. You've got to look uh, at other ingredients, you've got to look at other routes to revenue. And, um, you know, it, it can feature as part of those plans, but it shouldn't be the only thing. And that's what we're getting now with Marketplace, with our nicotine free vapes and with other projects that you'll hear about in the coming months. Yeah, I wrote on the group uh, about a week or 10 days ago that Chill is no longer a CBD company, but a distribution company for relaxation products of all kinds. I think that's fair. Uh, that's a good assumption. I think I think we will sell CBD for sure, but it isn't necessarily going to be the mainstream. I mean, if, if vapes take off, then all of a sudden, how can you say it's a CBD company? Okay, you may have end, end up having CBD vapes as well, but the reality of the situation is you're going to go to chill.com because you want to relax. Yeah, I, very much so. I mean, look, it's, it's often, again, taking it kind of back to the business side of things and why brands would sign up in the first place, but why it's you know lucrative for us 
It's very difficult for businesses in our area, functional ingredients and wellness to get a leg up and start trading, whether that's on Amazon or whatever it happens to be with the big retailers. Chill to date has been a great example of that. You know, certainly we've had a very rocky road to being where we are and we know how hard it can be. And by virtue of our public listing, we're scrutinized perhaps more closely than others in our space. Um, You have to do things by the book, um, but that doesn't mean you can't carve out a space for those higher risk products and, and make you know, fairly decent money on them. Consumers want them. They want to learn about them. They want to use them. And chill.com and chill as a company over time, as we scale, will become a destination for people who are looking for natural products that help them to live an intentional, natural, healthy life. And so, yeah, I I think, you know, to, to answer your point, yes, there is so much more ahead that takes us far outside of the remit that we were previously focused on. My final question, I suppose, is what does the ability to monetize chill.com do to its valuation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, as I've said in the past, chill.com as an asset is um, is unlike perhaps uh, as any domain asset, unlike houses or, or perhaps more quantifiable assets. So it's difficult to put a number on it. It really is what it's worth to the buyer. And, you know, I've kind of alluded to some of the high profile buyers that were sniffing around it at the same time as us when we came to buy it. I I think obviously being able to attach quality revenue figures, traffic, interest in the site to it as a domain can only inflate its value. You know, the interesting thing is chill.com had already developed, uh, you know, a fair amount of traffic before we put anything on that website, as I said in the past. And that in itself uh, is worth, you know, a, a fair sum. The more traffic, the more interest we drive towards that domain by whatever project we happen to put onto it, uh, the greater value I think we can assign to it in any sale event. Okay, great. I think uh, we're making great progress and uh, we look forward to speaking to you shortly um, regarding uh, this uh, imminent new product. I don't think you need to be counting stars going forward there, Callum. And I apologise for the One Republic uh, pun there. So uh, on that note, I think we'll <laughs> we'll sign off and uh, wish you all the best and look forward to welcoming you in the future. Thanks very much, guys. Good to speak to you. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.